The first trig function we're going to talk about is the sine function, S-I-N-E. And we're going to look at the sine of 30 degrees, and we're going to define that, what the sine of 30 degrees is. Now, the sine itself, we all, if we take an uh, angle, and we want to know the sine of an angle, what we can do is, do is drop an altitude. And if we know the length of this side here and the length of this side here, the sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And that ratio will give me the sine of theta. So um, the, one, the way I can write this is just, it is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And another neat way to remember that, that's HY, hypotenuse, op over high, is sinope, sin op. There are three little words you can learn, sinope, cosity, and tenopad. So we're going to learn the sine, cosine, and tangent. But sin op will allow you to remember that it's the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And I'm interested in the sine of 30 degrees. So I have a 30 degree, 30, 60 triangle here. I take my 30 degrees, I drop my altitude, and I can, it doesn't hurt me to call this one and this two, and this is the square root of three. And since it's the opposite over the hypotenuse, the sine of 30 degrees is one half, just like that. Now I'm interested in the sine of 60 degrees. To find that, I have my 60 degree angle, and I drop my altitude, and I have my, uh, my respective sides here. And it's the opposite over hypotenuse, the root 3 over 2, the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, and then I can look at the sine of 45 degrees. Okay, so I go over to my 45, 45, 90. Here's a 45 degree angle going here. I drop my altitude down here, and this is going to be 1, 1 square root of 2. Call this 1, and so it's 1 over root 2. And if we Rationalize it. In other words, if I multiply the top by square root of 2 and the bottom by square root of 2, I'll get 2 on the bottom and square root of top, square root of 2 on top, and I'll get root 2 over 2. Sometimes this is more convenient, sometimes this is more convenient. Just depends upon what you're doing it with. But of course, if you pop these in your calculator, you get the same number. So sine of 30, 60, 45. Now there's a couple other angles, the zero degree. Uh, zero degrees and 90 degrees, which are also considered common angles. We don't have a triangle for those, so we have to invent one. So I'm going to not invent a, a zero. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is if zero degrees would be as if, if the terminal side were laying right on top of the initial side. Okay, But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it up like this, just a little bit off like that. I'm going to drop my altitude, and I'm going to call that, this is zero degrees. And if this were laying on top of it, an interesting thing would happen. I'd have this side would be zero in length, and these two sides would be equal. So it doesn't hurt to call them one and one. And I call that my zero degree triangle. And now I can look at the sign and say, well, what is the sign of zero degrees? The sign of zero degrees, of course, is opposite over hypotenuse, a zero over one, or a zero. Now what do I do with 90 degrees? Well, I have to create a special triangle, a sort of a faux triangle, right? 90 degrees, you can't have two 90 degree angles, but you can, as this approaches 90 degrees, what happens when you drop your altitude is this begins to go to zero. We can call this 90 here. It's just a 90 degree angle. It's really standing up straight, and this line is connected right to that. And these will be the same length, one and one. Now when I do the sine of 90 degrees, I'll try and get it right here. You can move it over a little bit. Sinope, opposite over hypotenuse, is 1 over 1, or 1. So these are, are sort of um, false tri uh, right triangles, but they're very useful. In other words, as this approaches 90 degrees, what happens is this side goes to 0, and these two sides become the same length. So there's no harm in calling each one of them 1. And you can still use opposite over hypotenuse to find the sine of uh, 90 degrees and 0 degrees using these triangles. Later when we learn the unit circle, we'll probably ditch these because it's so easy to use the unit circle, on, especially on these. Okay, that's it.